Somebody promised you something. You, are, you go there, you go there, you try, you do everything you do. You, you've forgotten about it, you've adjusted. They now say, Take. And that's what happens. That's what the Bible says. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. When hope is deferred, the heart is sick. Hope deferred. Proverbs 13, verse 12, make the heart sick. And there are a lot of people today. Can we get another translation for that? Message. <laughs> Unrelenting disappointment leaves your heart sick. But a sudden good break. Someone says sudden. Good break can turn life around. When hope's dream seem to drag on and on, delay can be depressing. But when at last your dream comes true, life's sweetness will satisfy your soul. When hope is crushed, the heart is crushed. A wish comes true, filled you with joy. Amen. So speed is important in your pursuit. Speed is not about having a dream. It's about arriving destiny on time. What is speed? Arriving destiny on time. What is speed? Arriving destiny destiny on time so what are the facilitators of speed what empowers speed number one is prayer if your prayer life determines your speed life not to pray is to swim in delay not to pray is to swim in delay refusal to pray is an invitation to delay Elijah prayed. Elijah prayed. There are people who are, they have no desire. They are so lazy to pray and they have accepted it. When people are praying, they pray for a few minutes and they, anywhere you are groomed to pray, love that place. Some people will sleep anywhere. All night they will sleep. So long as prayer, they will sit down. Amen. Let's rise up to pray. Uh, uh. When you say it's time to pray, it's like you have carried a whip to flog them. Paul was preaching one time. He wasn't looking at anybody's face. He was preaching Acts chapter 20. While he was preaching, the preaching was too long. Into the night, a young man, Eutychus, was sitting by the window. And Eutychus means fortunate. The guy was very fortunate. But he ended unfortunate. He was sitting by the window. The message was too long. As Paul was preaching, the guy fell down from the, from the window and died. Paul went there, brought him back to life, put him back on the window and continued preaching. Whether you die or, or you wake up, this message must continue. <laughs> you die, you wake up. That thing that you wear on your leg, I don't know why they call it slippers. Because the real slippers are those that sleep in church. <laughs> that you wear on your leg, they call sleepers. I don't know what they call it sleepers. Sleepers are those who practice the act of sleeping. They are called sleepers. <laughs> no, I do not, you know, you know, there are some things I will see. I start asking my, I work on my head. It's like that big vehicle. You know those big cars? A Kennedy Chuku. Young shall grow. They call them luxurious. But why? Luxury means enjoyment. That one is Gesha boss. Is sardine. What is luxury there? You don't know how to use English. What is when you say luxurious? It means that there is space. You see where they squeeze people there? What's luxury there? That's Gesha sardine. They... In the name of Jesus, receive the appetite for prayer yeah. if you want to see I'm not saying pray prayer point I'm saying love prayer it, it, it brings an uncommon level of speed when you give yourself to prayer there are certain things that happen that breaks nature open a life of prayer makes you live and dwell on the wings of the supernatural 
and nothing frustrates the natural like the supernatural. What would have taken you 10 years, take you 10 months? Why? Speed. 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 Prayer. And there are three elements that empower prayer. Number one is scriptures. When you want to be a man who would enjoy prayer, you must be a man of the word. You must be a man of scriptures. Because in the midst of prayer, God comes to check what you are saying. The Bible says in the book of Daniel chapter 10 verse 12, Daniel, from the first day that thou chastened thyself before the Lord thy God, you set you out to pray. I have come for thy words. Thy words were heard, I have come for thy words. So whenever you are fasting and you are seeking the face of God, get scriptures at that period. The little time you are not praying, load yourself with scriptures and begin to pray those through. Father, you said in your word, this is what you said. That's the best thing to do in the place of fasting. People think that when you start fasting, wait for time to break. Just wake up in the morning, say what time? Say six to six, okay. You now sit down and face the work clock. I bet it's not come. That long one. <laughs> and that short one. If the long one is here, the short one, what, what is the time? Is it 3 p.m.? Ah! Oh, wow. But when you give yourself to the word, and you are addicted because in the midst of that, God does not check how your stomach, your, the worms in your stomach are rattling and rumbling. What God checks is what are you saying in the place of prayer? What are you saying in the place of prayer? So you must give yourself to scriptures. You must be that person. Take the book of Ezekiel. Take the book of Jeremiah. Say, okay, I want to seek the face of God today for tomorrow for just two days, three days. I'm going to finish Jeremiah. I'll finish Isaiah. I'll finish Ezekiel. You, are, you engage yourself in that and you begin to pray. As you begin to study that, your spirit is full because if you fast on an empty spirit, you can attract devils. Yeah. That's why in the midst of fasting, some people can be seeing things that they don't want to see. Why? Because their spirit is empty. Check those, ask them, did you study your Bible? No. So the period of their fasting is when they are seeing some dreams of people feeding them. That's when they see the dreams of some strange men and women coming to them. Because their spirit is empty. And there is anything that, if, that attracts evil spirits is emptiness. Don't forget Matthew 12, 43. When an evil spirit goes out of a person, he says, he wandered through dry places seeking rest and find it not. And he says, I will return back to my house. When he gets there, he makes it swept. Swept. Clean. Right? Yeah, that's what fasting does. It cleans you. It prepares you. But empty. So you now study the word of God. He said, when it is, it is empty, swept, and garnished. This is not what the devil did. The devil cannot sweep a house or make it garnished. It is you engaging in fasting. It sweeps your mind. It prepares your mind. But because there is no word there, what would have attracted the Holy Spirit is now attracting strange spirits. I don't know if you understand that. It attracts strange spirits and at the end of the day, the man that went into a fast well, leaves the fast and is sick. I've had to tell me since after I've, I finished the fast, I had pain here. So I had this here. Because there was no word in them. So, praying with scriptures. And that's why you see prayer and the word go side by side. Acts chapter 6 verse 4. We will give ourselves to prayer and the ministry of the word. It's not a gift. There's nobody who has the gift of quoting scriptures. So when I stand on the altar and I'm reading scriptures, I say, ah, God, Papa's brain. There's nothing like that. It is what you give yourself to that naturally follows you. It's work to study. Amen? There are people that do not open their Bible until they come to church. That's when they open the Bible. The pastor says, turn to, open to, turn to, open to. Until they get to church, they don't open their Bibles. So you must daily be addicted to the word of God. I told you about the story of a young brother that doesn't read the Bible. And the way he reads his Bible is like this. Yes. The name of Jesus, the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus. Anywhere his eyes get to, he reads. Anything that opens. So one day he just wanted to pray, say, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. 
he just went and saw and Judas went to hang himself say God forbid and the next thing he saw was go and do likewise God forbid about you and so whatever thou readest do it quickly say today say today no bible study today no bible study read the bible copiously start from chapter 1 chapter 2 read like that stop all this some of you looking at me that's what you do Just like those who pray with the sign on their body yeah. There are people, no matter you pray for them, these are the most I'm not critical, it's okay, that's what you do, it's fine. But you must be a person of the word. Number two, element that empowers prayer is that you must understand the mystery of having a prayer partner. You must have a prayer partner. Your prayer partner can be a brother. If you're not married, can be a sister. If you're married, number one is your partner, your wife. If Adam makes it faster, your husband makes it faster. Prayer partner. And you have to be very sensitive because once you have a prayer partner, you are supposed to be open to that partner. But why it's very risky today is because most people in church, once you are open to them, you will hear it everywhere. So you have to be extremely sensitive and prayer partners are revealed to you by the spirit. Because when your attacker becomes your prayer partner, your problem is going to be long. When the person fighting you is not the one agreeing with you. So you must have a prayer partner. If two shall agree. Matthew 18, 19. Also, you see um, Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 10. Two are better than one. For they have a good reward for their labor. Look at verse 10. Whoa. For if they fall, one will lift. If, if, one will lift another. If, but woe to him that is alone. When he fall. Two are better than one. If, they fall. Woe to him that is alone. When he fall. When there are two. If. They fall. If it's a low, when it falls. So when you have the right partner, your falling is conditional. If. But when you are alone, your falling is certain. When. Means you must. But with the right person, if. Never carry a person that has your same weakness as your prayer partner. He like food. You like food. And both of you are prayer partners you will never fast well. His weakness is your weakness. Your weakness, are, both of you like sleep. <laughs> and your prayer partners. <laughs> Amen. One time I was pairing, I used, in, my, in the, my campus days, I used to be the head of prayer band at um, a certain level before they now promoted me. From prayer band to the head of usher. From head of prayer band to head of usher department. Amen. I expected to be president. They didn't give me. They rig it. I, you know the story, right? I've told you the story, okay. So, I paid people. We have in the video. And I said, you, you. Yeah. You, you, yeah, you, you. So, we, we went outside. Then it was the campus. We went outside the school. We were doing um, Jericho match. You know, Jericho match where you are possessing this school for Christ. The campus for Christ. This campus. So, I paired two, two people to be praying. I made a mistake. I paired two brothers who we know to be sleepers. I paired them. So, by the time we now came back together, we counted. We are supposed to be 52. We are 50. So we're worried. I was counting out my eyes. I said, wait, who's not here? Who's not here? We didn't see them. So now said, people should go back and start looking around. So I look up. We saw these brothers on the grass. You know, when you start sleeping and you put your hand here, you can't wake up on time. <laughs> Anybody you see that put hand at the middle like this, 
It's gone. You put hand at the middle. So we got there. This one is not one. It's two. Two. We just saw this one put hand and that one put hand like this. Both of them. And they were by each other. So it was not, it was not accidental. It was let us sleep. It was an agreement. If, if one, one slept, the another slept. No, they slept by each other. They just slept. So brother, they were angry. Look up. As well as look up. Leave them all. I made a mistake. I would have paired somebody who has the strength to overpower the other person's weakness. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. So never, never, once somebody has the same weakness with you, that person cannot be your prayer partner. So you have to, that's one thing you must check. Look for somebody who your weakness is their strength so that you can pray together. You need to. The church of God has become a place where because people have been hurt, people have been backstabbed, people have been betrayed, so they don't know who to trust. So everybody's just going solo. No matter how we try to go solo, that's not what the word of God tells us to do. Man is relational by nature. Man is a relational being. You are created to relate. You can never ever succeed. That's what finished John the Baptist. John the Baptist started living in isolation. He prepared the way for Jesus. Jesus became the Lord. Jesus came on the scene. John should have just lined up behind Jesus. Because his assignment was done. But he kept on preaching. He kept on preaching. Looking for dimensions. From preaching repentance, he became a marriage counselor. Telling people, don't marry this person, you know. They cut off his head. It's important. You need, you see, God Almighty will give you the prayer partner that he has ordained for you. That will strengthen your faith. That will help you to grow in God. That will help you to grow in faith. In the name of Jesus. Everything in life is partnership. But today we have more negative partnership. We have partners in wickedness. We have partners in hatred. We have partners in conspiracy. The third element you need in prayer is expectation. Scriptures, partners, expectation. You must have expectation. Don't go into the place of prayer without expectation. It's an element for prayer. Expectation. For the endless expectation of the creature waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut short. Surely there is hope. Have expectation. Go into God's presence with this confidence. Speaking his word back to him. Hebrews 13, 5 and 6. He says, be, con be not covetous, but be content. Let your conversation be without covetousness. Be content with such as you have. He says, for you have said, I will never leave you. Know what? So that I may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do to me. Enter God's presence with that expectation. Father, I know you are going to do it. When Elijah told, that, told, told the servant to go check when he was praying, he said, go back and check. What do you see? The man said, I see nothing. He prayed. He said, go back again. What do you see? I see nothing. Go back again. Nothing in your life. What do you see? Go back in. Don't give up until your problem. Give up. Go back, go back, go back. Pray with expectation. And when you begin to pray with that expectation in your heart and faith, believing that God answers prayer. Hallelujah. I'm talking about empower speed. I said prayer. The second thing that empowers speed is the hand of God. The hand of God came upon Elijah. The hand of God carries man. The hand of God directs man. It was the hand of God that carried Philip. In Acts chapter 8 from verse 39 to 40. The hand of God carried him. Hand of God. When the hand of God comes upon a man. Mm, Kabaru Shata. The hand of God. When it comes upon a man. It carries him. It directs him. It pilots him. Somebody say in the name of Jesus. From this day, I become 
a candidate of the hand of God. I become a candidate of the hand of God. Number two thing about this, the horse is strength. Somebody says strength. When I say strength here, I mean stamina, I mean stability. Strength, I mean agility, I mean force. Strength, 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 strength. Do you know sometimes spiritual strength can even facilitate physical energy? When you, spiritual strength, when you are strong in the spirit physically, it wires that same capacity to your body. To your body, physically. There are people today, they had the breakdown. If they break down, it's shocking to everybody. They go from here, go from here, go to there, go there. I've had pastors travel with me and when they come back, they'll sleep for three days. They'll sleep, wake up, sleep, wake up, sleep, wake up. And when they just sleep, when they are sleeping at the turn TV, they see me jumping on the altar. They, they call themselves, say, watch your TV, watch your TV, on your TV. And the other, yeah, the man is jumping. In fact, something happened one day. A pastor came to where I was staying and stayed with me from morning to night. He was looking at everywhere, just around, walking, walking, walking. I didn't know he was trying to check if there was one energizer somewhere. So that, ah! So he cannot be judged. It is not fufu. It's not fufu. <laughs> one television house in one country said, Apostle, once your program come, once it just starts, we'll just tell ourselves, oh yeah, it's time for gym. <laughs> See, in the office, all of them just start jumping. <laughs> in the office, they want to lose weight. <laughs> but there are people today who get bro broken down and weak because their spirit is weak. You know Peter said so? Eh? Everyone today that you see around the world who is an enemy of a destiny, one thing that they are looking for is the source of your strength. Not the greatest concern of your enemy is your confidence. And when they see you confident, they want to know what makes you confident. They are after what? Your strength, the source. What makes you you? They are looking for it. When you are glowing, you are shining, you are blessed. They see you walking about, no tears, you are happy, you are smiling. They are looking for the source of your strength. The greatest concern of the enemy is your confidence. Rabshakeh said to, to, to one of the kings, he said, where is the confidence where thou trusted? Delilah said to Samson, tell me what is the secret of your strength? What can I do to you that you become like an ordinary man? You will not be like an ordinary man. In the name of Jesus, you will not be like an ordinary man. Look at that. Isaiah chapter 36 Verse 4, Rabshakeh said unto them, Say now to Ezekiah, Thus said the great king of Assyria, What confidence is this when thou trusted? What is your confidence? You are smiling, you are just jumping in the midst of struggle, you act like nothing is happening to you. What is their hope? What is their strength? What is their confidence? Amen. Strength. Strength. The greatest concern of your enemy is your strength. Judges 16, 5 to 9. 5 to 19. 5 to 19. Nothing empowers strength. There are elements that you engage in and strength is empowered. Strength is wired into you. You engage in this element. And you enjoy strength. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10. The joy of the Lord is my strength. For you to live a life of strength, you must perpetually be joyful. Somebody say joyful. Be perpetually joyful. Anything that makes you sad, please avoid it. Be joyful. Be permanently joyful. 
The Bible says in Philippians 4.4, 4, Rejoice in the Lord always and again. Rejoice. Rejoice. Dodie Austin, the wife, the late wife of late John Austin, great man of God, living in Texas in America. One time the doctors gave her 40 days to live because she had cancer. So everybody was panicking. She did something. She told the husband that she wants peace. She wants to be alone. He said, okay, they allowed us to stay alone. She got some prayer books and got some comedy and put, as she was praying, she would watch them, she would laugh. In other words, she was saying, even if she's going to die, she wants to die happy. But as she was laughing, just excited, after the 40th day, both with prayer, they took her out for the test and there was no trace of cancer. And she lived for many years. There are so many of us that react to our environment. We react to the things people say. We react to the things we see. Guard your mind. Anything that will make you unhappy, please avoid it. There are certain people that make you unhappy. Avoid them. Avoid them. I didn't say hate them. I say avoid them. For your own sanity. Avoid them. People that make you unhappy, places that make you unhappy, stories that make you unhappy, avoid them. Avoid them. There are some people, especially Africa, Africa likes bad news. Okay, if you say I'm lying, meet somebody after service and tell the person, ah, For the past four days, no food. Nothing to have, no food. Hey, yeah. If I last week, they will draw chair. They want to sit down. They want to hear. But just tell them, I ah, see what happened for me. God just helped me. I just got a lot in my account. The way I'm bawling now, the way I'm smiling, the way I'm. Eh, I beg you. Want to show yourself now. Am I correct? They like bad news. They like bad. They like to hear that you are crying. They will be disappointed. Yeah. Psalm eighty-four, verse seven. They grow from strength to strength. Every one of them appeared before God in Zion. So another strength booster is appearing in Zion. Zion is the presence of God. And I've told you the presence of God can be broken down into two halls. The literal physical presence of God, which is the church, and the secret place. The presence of God. Anytime you come to a place like this, you become refired, rewired. Strength comes. That is why we are going to church. You say, I'm going to service. I'm going so that God can service me. I'm going to be serviced. Say, where are you going? At the go service. In other words, I'm going for servicing. When you want your car to perform better, what do you do? You service. When you come like this, they service you. By the time you walk out, you are ready to take the world. Service. And they go from strength to strength. Every one of them. Are, so if you want to increase your strength, you must love the house of God. That thing that makes you come to church late is against your life. That thing that made today. Mm, um, some people nothing or nothing say what's the matter they do me like say I don't go to church today <laughs> you've not seen that my body I want to rest I don't feel like it. have you ever had an exam then it it, it do you like to make you no writer? See, it's like I should not write the exam. That, that's nice. To feel like not to write the exam is to feel like to feel. You just sit at home, nothing. You don't just feel like going to church. And sometimes when you advise people about church, they, you see, people will tell you that God is everywhere, even in your room. Even your heart. 
It's a church. Church in our mind. That church that is in your mind, what's the name? Who is the pastor of the church in your mind? Who is the one taking praise and worship? That church in your mind. Who is the... It's a church in my mind. Church is in the heart. You know, Satan will do everything to, to, to logically keep you bound. Say, church is in the mind. She's not, I say, I'm better than all those people who are going to, to church. My own is mind. No! Don't forsake the assembly. People don't know that Jesus, while he was walking on the face of this earth as a human being, he was always going to church. Hey, Luke chapter 4 verse 16. He went to the synagogue as his custom was. Luke 4 16. And he came to Nazareth when he has been brought up. And as his custom was, he did what? He went on the he went what? Into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. So when Jesus was walking on the face of this earth, he was not sitting at home saying church is in my mind. He was going to the physical building where people gathered. So I'm asking you, who would you obey? Jesus or, or men? Jesus would go physically to where people gather. When he got there, and not only was he a, a committed church goer, he was a worker. He was effective. He would always stand to read. The Bible says, as his custom was. It was his tradition. There are some people, even if there's a church in their house. Opposite. Have you noticed that people that live close to church are the ones that come late? They'll just open their door. What is it that they praise and worship? They never start. What do they say? Choir. Okay, okay. We oh, yeah, are bath, 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 bath. Bath. Start calling the children. Mbeke, Syracuse, Green Glory. We are bath, 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 bath. So all of them will just wear their clothes. And when you become, when you become casual, you know what David said? I would rather be a doorkeeper. I would rather be a doorkeeper. When I talk about the presence of God appearing in Zion, the literal physical, and also the second wall and dimension of the presence of God of Zion is the secret place. He that dwelleth enter God's presence and in the place of worship and prayer and just stay there. Stay there. Stay there. Okay. You are worshiping God. You are checking time. You want to round up on time and do what? No, after you round up, what do you want to do? You now sit down. Okay. I'm pressing phone. That's what you rounded up for. As you are worshiping God and pray, something is telling you round up, round up, round up. Round up and do what? Sometimes when people are in a hurry to leave church, I wonder where they are going. The same house that we are in Monday to Saturday. And there's no light. <laughs> they are in a hurry. They want to go home. Okay, you now leave. You go home. You now sit down. You now carry fun. You are doing nothing at home. But stay in God's presence, enjoy still to the end of the service. Just enjoy God, enjoy His presence. Say, listen, the Bible didn't say he that visited, he that dwelleth. Not he that is a visitor to the secret place. He that dwelleth. That's where you stay. When you are praying, you have time to see the face of God. Stay there. True prayer takes time. To generate the presence of God, you must spend time. Hallelujah. One time I was told I was going to preach in South Africa for one night. And it was a church that was mixed with a lot of white people. Many years ago, the first, the second time, one time, the first time South Africa was somewhere in Johannesburg, the second time was a church with 80% white. I spent time, 10 hours every day for 8 days. That was my shortest service till date. The shortest service I ever had till date. As I walked towards the pulpit, all I could say was thank you Holy Spirit. That was the end. 
All I just lifted up my hands. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That was the end. Wheelchairs, eyes were getting open. People were falling every, everywhere. I couldn't open my Bible. I turned to the altar. The pastor and the wife were on the ground. I turned to the protocol that brought me. They were on the floor. I couldn't do anything. So I knew this was not me. This was the presence that came in. But somebody spent time to generate it. Spend time. It's not because you can't. It's because you have not allowed God. If anybody tells you you can be on your phone for three hours just browsing, you won't believe. But if you decide to check time, you have spent hours browsing. Getting information that you don't need. But in God's presence, something always takes you out. We need to generate strength. And the strength is in the secret place. I asked God one day, where, how do I get greatness? How do I get prosperity? How do I get this? How do I get that? He said, in the secret. The secret is in the secret. The secret is in the secret. The secret of everything you need in life is in the secret place. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow I will say spend time you know when God wanted to visit Adam the Bible says God will come in the cool of what? Of the day. To miss him. He knew that was the time Adam would be in his presence. Adam spent time. And there are so many of us today. Our biggest problem is that we have no secret place life. There's no, no, no life in the secret place. All we do is public. Your public life should be a reflection of your secret life. When you are a singer, a prayer band person, whatever. When you have spent so much time with God in the secret, an overflow is what you bring to the public. When Moses entered God's presence, the Bible says he spent time. When he came out, they could not behold his face. His face was shining. He was not aware. Moses never entered the presence of God so his face could shine. If it's today, after he prayed 30 minutes, you say, bro, you don't they shine. You don't shine. You don't shine. Say no. Rakato si brehante macro dasha. Come on. You don't. No. Moses was not prepared for that. Paul spent time in the secret place. Paul spent time. The sons of Skeba in Acts 19 never spent time, but they wanted the result. Paul had. And the madman saw them. In fact, these guys were so stupid that they, they could not even use headache for experiment. They carry madman. You want to experiment with a madman? And the madman said, Jesus, I know. Paul! Call Paul's name. Who are you? Who are you? You know, when they got that madman, they went there, they were looking. I'm sure they saw that case. They saw stomach pain. We don't want this one. They saw that. So the thing that wanted to destroy them, push them to a madman. They saw the madman. They said, we can make you normal. When they carried the madman, he kept quiet. If he was violent, they could not have led him to the room. The, so when the, the man my son, my kept quiet, they felt that the thing was working. It did work, 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 it did work. So he took him, the man was quiet, followed them, as they take him to the room, they would say, Stand there. He would stand. Turn. Follow us. They made sure they locked the door. When they locked the door, the man said, yes. The man said, sit down. He said, sit down here. Beat them up. The Bible says seven men ran out naked. The man, man, <laughs> okay, you took somebody inside the house. You were normal. You ran out naked. Who is now mad between? Because they had no secret place life. Lift your hands wherever you are seated. Say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I receive the passion 
I receive the appetite. I receive the desire. Henceforth, to spend time in the secret place. I receive the appetite, the passion, the desire to spend time in the secret place. Holy Spirit of God. Just lift your hands wherever you are. Castle Africa TV.